October 14th, 9.41am, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number two. Sorry, number four. I misread it. <laughs> I have not played Ace Attorney in a long time, so uh, let's continue. Hey, Nick. What is it this time? You won't believe how many people are here for the trial. Well, it is a murder case. What are you talking about? They're here for the trial next door. Next door? Why don't you know this, Nick? They're having Detective Atme's trial today. Detective Atme? They say they're gonna try him as Mask Damaske. Already? That was fast. Boy, I'd love to see Mask Damaske's trial. <laughs> Is that, um... I think that's wrong, but I'm not sure. I know... By the way, where's Pearls? Oh, she went back home. She said she can't neglect her training anymore. I know you don't like me. Pearls has really gotten into her training lately. Tr her training lately, huh? Yeah, ever since that incident last year. Please, don't ignore me. Oh, Mr. Delight, good morning. No one likes me. No one would notice me, even if I killed someone. Come on, don't be silly. W wait a sec. You don't mean you're the murderer? N no, no, I'm just a poor thief. No, wait, that's not right. A thief can't really be poor. I mean, yeah, a thief can be poor. That's one of the reasons people steal things, because they're poor and they need to. Now, let's see. According to Mr. Delight, from his second crime on, he was following a bunch of set plans. Plans that someone had been sending to help... Sending to him to help him commit the heists. Do you really think there's a connection between the thief and the murder, Nick? It's possible, but today's trial is a race against the clock. Huh? How come? Let's just take our time like always. I'm afraid that's not an option. Hmm? I don't know why he's being so enigmatic. It'll be explained shortly. October 14th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number six. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delight. The defense is ready, Your Honor. You're ready? Preparation is the last refuge of the weak. <laughs> okay, settle down, everyone. Let's begin with our opening statement, Mr. Gotto. Ugh, he's got the judge in the palm of his hand. Yet again. Ron Delight is simply too young to be sent to war. That's all. I'm afraid I have no idea what that means, Mr. Gotto. Ha! Huh. Then you need to get out more, Your Honor. Life is war, but that is exactly why you have to be more precise in your wording. That's all my statement means. You understand now, right? Actually, I have no idea. <laughs> yes. Well then, let me briefly summarise the details of this case. Wow, the judge is taking charge like he knows what's going on for a change. The victim is Kane Bullard, CEO of KB Security. His body was found in a safe at approximately 9am on the morning of the 13th. However, the time of death was estimated at 1 as 1am of the previous day. And that's when our little lost kitten dropped the ball. That little lost kitten is, of course, the defendant. I've forgotten what my Gotto voice was, I hope I'm doing it right. Very well then, Mr. Gotto, please call your first witness. I never drink more than 17 cups of coffee during any given trial, but the first one is always the best. Um, Mr. Gotto, your witness? Okay then, let's hear what the defendant, Mr. Ronda Light, has to say for himself. The defendant? Well, Mr. Wright, does the defense have any objections? It may be a bit of a disadvantage having the defendant testify, but... I remember when Mia was defending me. She allowed me to testify so she could do the cross-examination. She put a lot of trust in me back then. We have no objections, Your Honor. The defense will allow Mr. Delight to testify. Ha. <laughs> You've got guts, trite. 
All right then, Mr. Wonderlight, please take the stand. You did it, didn't you? Yes. What? Uh, no, 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 no. Th 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 that's not true. Hmm. For a moment there, I thought we'd set the record for the shortest trial ever. <sighs> well, Mr. Delight already looks plenty guilty with that face he's making. And once he opens his big mouth, he'll probably put the last nail in his own coffin. Huh. Very well. Now then, can you tell me something? If you didn't kill Bullard, why did you go to KB security? W well, I... It's kind of hard to say. Boy, I wish I could go home. Now then, let's hear some testimony about what happened. My visit to KB security. That evening, around 1am, I went to see Mr. Bullard in his office at KB security. The blackmail letter I got, it ordered me to go there. I'd been working for KB Security until a year ago, so I knew where his office was. 1am, the exact time the murder took place. The weak get washed away by the tides of fate, the strong drink it up. Ha, it's bitter today too, just like my destiny. You'd never know that from the way he's chugging it down. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, if you please. My visit to KB Security. Um, I think we just want to press a bit to start with, so... Hold it. 1am, huh? You're absolutely sure about that? Yes, that's what my watch said when I was entering the CEO's office. Uh, no. Actually, I'm not really sure. My watch was slow, and my internal clock was also a bit... 1am. That's the exact time the victim, Mr. Bullard, was murdered, correct? It's too late for a coffee date, that's for sure. Well, is it the exact time, or approximately? Like, you can't estimate an exact time of death very accurately, right? Hmm. The blackmail letter I got, it ordered me to go there. Sorry, the, the blackmail letter I got, it ordered me to go there. Press? Okay. It... Ordered you there? That's not quite what he said, but okay. It was the first time I'd gotten a blackmail letter that ordered me to go somewhere. Does that mean you've gotten other blackmail letters then? Oh, of course. They'd say things like, steal this, or take that. Uh, why don't you save those for later, Mr. Delight? Please don't say any more. Now, what should I, what should do I do? Oh, typo. What should do I do? Hmm, let's press harder. So, what did the blackmail letter in question say? It said to bring $50,000. Money, eh? A perfect motive for committing murder. Oh, but wait, wait! I never intended to pay that money anyway. Oh, is that right? After all, he had nothing to hold over my head. I had nothing to be afraid of. Hmm, an important point indeed. Witness, let's have that added to the, your test. No. Witness, let's have that added to your testimony. <laughs> yes, sir. Ha! A muddy mudskipper in outer space has a better chance of surviving than I do. A, a muddy mudskipper? Is that an expression? Like, like, uh, I've heard of like a snowball's chance in hell. Is that what you were going for? A, a muddy mudskipper. The blackmail threat didn't scare me. It wasn't going to cause me trouble or anything. If you don't want your to turn your... Ah, okay, I think it does cause some trouble. I think that's the contradiction. I can't quite remember if that's what we're supposed to do, though. Uh, let's just press and see if that gives us a bit more of a push. Just what were you being blackmailed about, anyway? The blackmail letter said, if you don't want your identity revealed, correct? I'm sure it was referring to the whole mask to mask gay thing. But I wasn't worried. Mr. Buller didn't have anything on me. He didn't? Anyway, I don't care what anyone says about me. Just as long as Desi believes in me. So that's why Ms. Delight didn't believe he was mask to mask gay. That's why I knew they were just hollow threats. 
Hmm. Okay, so the problem here is that for some reason Desiree hates criminals. I don't understand why, because doing crimes is good, but that is the contradiction. I'm just going to throw down a quick save point there on that spare slot, and let's try presenting, I guess, Ms. Delight? I'm, I don't remember. Objection. Nope, not Ms. Delight, the music didn't stop. Do I just present the letter itself? Objection. No. Sorry about this, I have not played this case in a long time. Uh, let me have another think. I'll try pressing this next part, see if that tells me anything. You used to be a security chief for KB Security, right? Yes, that's right. A security chief? You? And yet, a year ago you were fired without notice. Revenge for an old grudge? A perfect motive for murder, wouldn't you say? Hmm... This isn't good. Maybe I should change the subject? Uh, I think we do need to know some of this stuff. Why were you fired? Mr. Delight, please tell us why you were fired from your job. Well... The world is filled with those who have said, I wish I had never asked that. Uh, okay, then I take it back. Defendant, please answer the question. I... well, I needed money. You needed money? Um, well, you see, Desi loves to spend it. It's kind of her hobby. Not exactly the best hobby in the world, huh, Nick? My salary wasn't nearly enough, so I stole data from the company. Come again? KB Security has a lot of security info on all sorts of companies. And since I was a security team chief, you stole some data and sold it. Mr. Bullard find out, found out, and I was fired immediately. What? I wish I had never asked that. I was somehow able to keep it secret and made it seem like I had quit on my own. What is it, Nick? You don't look so good. Someone who brings harm to their company is fired as punishment. You do well to remember that. He sure told you. So you admit that you stole data from your company, is that correct? Y yes I'm sorry. This is a very important fact. Please add it to your testimony. Oh man, this whole thing just took a big turn for the worse, crashed and blew up. It's gonna take the jaws of life to rip this case from the clutches of disaster. Suing company secrets, but Desi doesn't know about that. I think now I can present Desi to this one, and it'll give me the right response. I don't know. I, I know that that's what the contradiction is, but I don't remember, like, how much information you need. Objection. There we go. Mr. Delight, what you said just now doesn't match what you told me yesterday. Huh? What doesn't? I think you must have been scared, very scared, of having a certain person find out your secret. A certain person? Ms. Desiree Delight, the defendant's wife. Wow, but I... I... Listen to me, my Desi, she's... Looks like if I just sit back and relax, the fun will end before it truly begins. Huh, <sighs> got her. Yes, we know. It was all your wife's fault. What do you mean? Mr. Delight stole company data to pay for his wife's spending habit, for which he was fired. Unable to face his own wife, someone used his dirty little secret to blackmail him. And that is how this murder came about. Oh, hmm. No, everything is falling neatly into place for him. D don't talk about my Desi like that, or you'll be sorry. Well, it seems that we've learned a great deal of things here so far. What do you think, Nick? I didn't think it was possible to get so thoroughly whipped in just 20 minutes. Clearly there was sufficient motive for murder. He stole data for his wife and he killed to protect his secret. A family man who cared just a little too much. <laughs> the motive is clear. Let's move on. Ugh. What happened at the crime scene at one in the morning, Mr. Delight? Come now, tell us where all is. 
At the CEO's office. When I entered the office, there was a suspicious shadow there? Suddenly I was hit on the forehead. After that, I remember being a bit dazed. If I hadn't been wearing that, I would have been killed. When I came to, Mr. Bullard was lying there, dead. Um, in the original version of this game, that silhouette is like blurred out so you can't tell who it is. Apparently they didn't quite do that in this version because it was very obvious who that was. <laughs> Pretend we don't know yet. <laughs> I see. Suddenly hit on the forehead, huh? I believe the detective from yesterday provided similar testimony. He said that Mask de Masque struck him on the head from behind. Of course, since Admi turned out to be the culprit himself, that was all a lie. Ha. Huh. No one's going to believe a pathetic lie like that. Well, what are you saying? I really was attacked. We'll find out if what you say is true or not during the cross-examination. Got that, Mr. Trite? Don't go easy just because he's your client. If I see any sign that you are, I'll treat you to another cup of my special blend. You don't need to worry about that, Mr. Gordo. I have faith in Ron. I know he didn't do it. Okay, so this testimony is pretty vague. Like, there's a sp suspicious shadow there. Where exactly? What does it look like? We don't know. Uh, and if you hadn't been wearing that, what is that? What, what were you wearing? There's a lot of questions, so we're gonna need to start pressing. Who was this suspicious shadow? If there were a thousand of me and even one knew, I'd tell you. Trust me. He's dodging all of our questions is not helping us win his case. Okay, then how was the victim, Mr. Bullard, at that time? What do you mean by how was he? Was he already dead? Was he still alive? Maybe he was the one who hit you in the first place? That's a good question. What do you think, Mr. Wright? F forget it. <laughs> Your forehead? Yes, I was hit on the forehead as soon as I entered the room. It was an amazingly fast and powerful attack. Do you remember anything about who hit you? Well, like I said, it was a fast and powerful hit, so I think I was a little dazed for a while. I don't think Mr. Delight even grasped what you were asking. Yeah, I'd like to show him a fast and powerful attack myself. Whoa. You, Phoenix, you, you're in a court of law, you cannot threaten to assault someone. Maybe that would knock some sense back into him. Oh my god. <sighs> that? Could you please clarify what you were referring to? Why, my Masked and Masque costume, of course. W wait just a moment. Masked and Masque? Huh? Oh, did I forget to mention it before? Just to be on the safe side, I dressed as Masked and Masque. And then I descended upon the office of the CEO of KB Security. What? Nick, did you know about this? He never told me this. I don't recall him ever mentioning it to me either. Even I didn't know that. It seems our little friend really loves to keep secrets. I'm sorry, I just never had a chance to mention it up until now. Wait, that's not right. Um, you know how sometimes things just slip your mind? Ha, my sixth cup of coffee is staring up at me coldly. At any rate, we can't ignore this new piece of information. Witness, please correct your testimony. I'd been killed if I hadn't been wearing my mask to mask at costume. Hold it. Why were you dressed up as mask to mask? Why, because I'm mask to mask, of course. W what are you talking about? Mask to Masque's trial is being held next door. Uh, y yes, I guess so. Anyway, at that time, I thought I was being blackmailed over the Mask to Masque issue. So I thought I should go as him, just to be safe. Oh boy. Let me tell you, it's a regal pain to move around with that cape. That's why it took a lot longer than I'd expected. Took a lot longer? What is he talking about? Um, what do you mean by took a lot longer? 
Oh, opening the safe, of course. My cape got caught on the safe door, you see. This all happened when I was hiding Mr. Bullard's body. What was that? Back up a second. Yes? You were the one that hid the body in the safe? Um, well, yeah. Inconceivable! You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Why? Just, why? What reason would you have? What were you thinking? Question. When does someone toss their dirty shorts in the washing machine? Uh, what? The answer is simple. When they take them off. As usual, I have no idea what you're saying. Do you mean that Mr. Delight hid the body because he's the murderer? Ha. Huh. So you're not as stupid as you look. His metaphor this time was really obscure. Mr. Wright, you don't mean that you knew about this whole safe business, do you? Uh, well, yes. Why am I the only one not in the loop here? Witness, make sure you add this to the testimony. I yes sir. Uh-oh, looks like a storm front is moving in over the Fairweather Judge. <sighs> I panicked and hid the body in the safe. It took about ten minutes. Ten minutes, huh? I believe... <sighs> yeah, I believe the problem here is the buzzer went off at 102, so if you'd heard the buzzer, you would have gone, wait a second, I should probably leave and not hide a body for 10 minutes. Objection. Yeah, music stopped. Your Honor, could you please take a look at this record? At this record? I'm imagining a vinyl record now, sorry. <laughs> and what might this be? The record for the emergency buzzer that, emergency buzzer that connects the CEO, CEO's office to security. Blech, I'm garbling my words, hang on. <laughs> Okay. If the button in the office is pressed, a security team is supposed to come running. And according to this record, the buzzer was pushed once at 1.02 a.m. What? If Mr. Rondelite truly was the murderer, he would have ran as soon as that buzzer sounded. After all, a security guard would have been heading his way. Ha. Huh. Let's remember who we're dealing with here. He probably had no idea there was security personnel in the building. Up until one year ago, my client was working as a chief of security. There's no way he wouldn't have known about them. But, as it turns out, the guard never came. That was nothing more than a coincidence. The fact that the guard was a pathetic loser, who had just gotten punched in the face by his ex's new boyfriend, and wasn't anywhere in the vicinity was not something Mr. Delight could have known. Ha. Huh. Again, remember who we're dealing with here. It's a sure bet that Mr. Delight didn't even notice the buzzer going off. This buzzer is extremely loud, there is no way he could have ignored something like that. If he had been conscious, that is. Conscious? What do you mean by that? Ugh. Fine, let's hear your theory. Recall the defendant's testimony. The moment he entered the victim's office, someone attacked him. Mr. Delight said he felt dazed. I'm willing to wager that he was knocked unconscious for at least a few minutes. Unconscious? So he fainted? That's why Mr. Delight didn't know that the buzzer had sounded. And that's why he thought he had time to hide the body. So what are you trying to say? Mr. Delight was knocked out, and the buzzer went off soon afterwards. Now, unless my client was able to hit the buzzer while he was unconscious, it can only mean that there was another person in that room. That's right, whoever it was, they knocked out Ron Delight and then pressed the buzzer. That is whoever, not whomever. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, order in the court! Mr. Wright, this... this is... This is preposterous. It was this kid. Ron Delight is the one who killed Kane Bullard. Then who pressed the buzzer? It, it was... the victim, of course. He 
He pressed the buzzer when the defendant attacked him. He didn't die right away. He must have held on long enough to push that button. Ack! Hmm. So Kane Bullard sounded the buzzer himself? What is your opinion on this, Mr. Wright? I need to prove that the real criminal was there at the scene, but how? Can I prove that it wasn't Kane Bullard who sounded the buzzer? Uh, well, he died at 1am according to the... Oh, I think we can actually. Uh, because we know that Kane him Kane Bullard himself was not wearing gloves, I believe is the key here, because there are no fingerprints on the buzzer. I don't know if we have that information, though. Is like a photograph of him somewhere? Hmm. I think the fact that there's no fingerprints is the key. The defense's opinion is this, Your Honor. This piece of evidence proves that it wasn't the victim who sounded the buzzer. I believe this is the piece of in incontrovertible evidence you were looking for. Is it the emergency buzzer? Is there some kind of clue on it? Absolutely not. Hey, come on now. At least give some thought to what you say before opening your mouth. The fact that there are absolutely no clues is itself the clue. Now I'm the one who's clueless. This button has no fingerprints on it. If Mr. Bullet had really pressed it himself, Naturally, he would have left his fingerprints behind. Ron Delight obviously wiped them off. Why would he? A guard could have come in at any moment. He touched that button, I know he did. The defendant, Mr. Delight, was dressed as Mask Damasque. And Mask Damasque always wears gloves. What reason could he possibly have had to wipe that button free of fingerprints? Order, order, order! Ha, it would seem. I've been forced to eat crow. I wonder what blend number crow flavored coffee is. However, if the real killer was there at the scene, why would that person press the emergency buzzer? Shouldn't they have run away without putting themselves in extra danger? <laughs> What's with this awkward silence all of a sudden? Ha, huh. it looks like you're fresh out of parlor tricks. They're on to you, Nick. J just give me a minute to collect my thoughts. The real culprit killed Mr. Bullard at around 1am. And Mr. Delight just happened to waltz in when the murder was taking place, right? Killer clobbered Mr. Delight and then sounded the buzzer. Even though security was supposed to respond right away if the buzzer was pressed. Security was supposed to respond? Hmm. Time's up, Mr. Wright. Let's hear what you have to say. Very well then. Oh ho, you've got some guts. I like that in an opponent. Why did the real killer sound the emergency buzzer? to call a security guard. The killer knew that if they pressed that button, a guard would come running. And that is exactly what they wanted. D do you mean to say the killer called the guard on purpose? Yes, although as it turned out, he never showed up. Because he was getting his clock cleaned at the time. Huh, what a touching story. You're saying the killer had a change of heart and called the guard to turn himself in? No, I'm not. When that buzzer sounded, there were three people in that office. The victim, Kane Bullard, who was already dead. The defendant, Ron Delight, who was out cold. And the third person, the real killer. Hypothetically, yes. Now then, in this situation, if the real killer made an escape, what would happen? The only ones left in the room would be the victim and Ron Delight. And, and if any security guards came running in at that time, they would think that I was the murderer. Yes, that was precisely the real killer's objective. To frame Ron Delight for the murder.
Order, order, order. Ha, it would seem. I've been made to eat my words once again. Actually, you've been made to do a spit take with a cup of coffee. M Mr. Wright, who was it? Who was it that tried to frame me? Uh, wait. Wait a second. I'm the one and only Master Maske, so... Nick, you mean the real killer is... We're going to drag that person in here right now. But, but, who is it? I don't have any solid proof yet, but think about it. The killer knew Mr. Delight's identity, and they also knew that he had been called to KB security that night. So the killer used him to execute a well-crafted plan to murder Kane Bullard. Hmm, now then, let's hear your accusation, Mr. Wright. Who was it that framed Mr. Ron Delight for the murder of Kane Bullard? I think we all know who it was, it's pretty obvious. It's this guy. <laughs> Detective Luke Atme. He's the only one who could have done it. Ace Detective Luke Atme? You mean Mask de Maske did it? Your Honor, the person being tried in the court next to us is not Mask de Maske at all. He is, in actuality, the true murderer of Kane Bullard. Order, order! M Mr. Wright, explain yourself. Theft and murder. Which is the more serious crime? They're not even close. Murder is the more serious crime, of course. It's a capital crime subject to a capital punishment. Please remember the trial from yesterday, if you would. When Luke Atme confessed, there was a huge commotion in the courtroom. Of course, a famous detective was unmasked as, well, as Masked Damasque. Instead of being convicted of murder, he was found guilty of grand larceny. That was his true objective all along. To be found guilty? Masked Damasque had the perfect alibi for when the murder took place. He was stealing the urn at Lordly Taylor. In other words, being found guilty as Master Maske was Luke Abney's airtight, watertight, and unassailable alibi. A guilty verdict as an alibi? You know, it's almost time. F for what? For Luke Abney's verdict. It was a pretty simple trial after all. If we're going to stop this trial and stall that one, we need to do it now. Of course. That's assuming you have proof that the detective was the one who committed the murder. Mr. Luke Atme's trial has indeed attracted the attention of the entire country. If we were to intrude and fail to provide adequate proof of his true crime, Mr. Delight would be left with no grounds for appeal. Am I really sure about this? Ha. Huh. A bet's only good when your life's the ante. Mr. Wright, I, I believe in you. Mr. Delight. So, so, please. I'm begging you! Thanks, but my decision will determine the rest of your life. Can I really risk your life like this? Phoenix. W what was that? Don't stray, Phoenix. For your client, take the path of trust. Th that voice, it, it sounds like... M Mia! Your Honor, the defense requests an immediate recess. Ha. Huh. So that's your answer, huh? Very well, I've decided as well. This court will now take a 20 minute recess. Mr. Wright, when we return, please summon Mr. Luke at me to the stand. Yes, Your Honor. October 14th, 11.58am, District Court, courtroom number 5. <laughs> well, Sir Detective Atme. <laughs> I have to say, Mr. Payne, you performed splendidly. Oh no, Sir Detective Atme, you were the one who... That's enough. This court sees no reason to further prolong this trial. This court finds the defendant, Luke Atme. 
Wait! Don't hand down your verdict yet, please. Well, well, Sir Lawyer. Welcome to my courtroom. Who's this hoser, eh? My name is Phoenix Wright, attorney at law, and I wish to file an accusation against this man, Luke Atme. A accusation? You accuse Mask Damaske? That man is not Mask Damaske. He's just a ruthless murderer. W what? To be continued. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Next time, we continue the trial. <laughs> Bye.